Apologies for running a little later than usual today. We had a big snowstorm up in Maine and school's delayed a couple hours. So I spent some extra time this morning playing with Play-Doh and do blow blocks before bringing my toddler to school. So, um, yeah, hashtag single dad life. Uh, Sorry for that. <laughs> the hashtags are kind of stupid. Uh, this episode of Marijuana Today Daily is brought to you by our friends over at Ease.com, California's top one-stop website for legal marijuana delivery, and now a national provider of hemp-based CBD products via their new platform over at EaseWellness.com. Make sure you take some time today to check out Ease's new 2018 State of Cannabis Report, which teases out all kinds of super helpful bits of data, information, knowledge, and wisdom about how and why people consume legal cannabis. In 2018, Ease saw an order flow through their California platform on average of every eight seconds. So they had a lot of raw data to first properly aggregate and anonymize before pairing with a bunch of smart polling for their editorial team to craft this year's report from. Take advantage of that base of data and the smart contextualization provided by Ease by opening up Ease.com and finding their new 2018 Insights report. And while you're at Ease.com, spelled E-A-Z-E. And if you're in California, you can go ahead and also place an order for legal marijuana delivery, which shows up at your door in less than an hour, assuming that it's during legal delivery hours and that you're in a part of the state where Ease is active. And those of us outside can dream about the day when Ease's service lands in our state. And for now, can check out easewellness.com to order hemp-derived CBD products via mail delivery in 41 U.S. states. Thanks again to everyone at Ease.com and easewellness.com for the support that keeps our news lights on. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Wednesday, January 30th, 2019, and you're tuned in to episode 655 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. We lead off today with some great news out of Baltimore, Maryland, where yesterday the city's top prosecutor announced that her office would no longer prosecute cases involving the simple possession of marijuana, no matter the amount found or criminal record of the person caught. People accused of trafficking will still have to face their charges, but otherwise folks arrested for simple possession will face no charges. Baltimore City Attorney Marilyn Mosby also said that her office would work to vacate around 5,000 possession charges dating back to 2001. This story is a little complicated by the position of the Baltimore City Police, which released a statement yesterday saying that it would continue to arrest people until the law changed. Mosby was asked about that statement later in the day and said of anyone busted by police, quote, we will release them without charges. Unquote. This is a good story to read in full. Swing over to the AP's story on Leafly for the full dive in. There's a story up in Idaho that could speak of a confusing year ahead for law enforcement. The Idaho statesman is reporting that the Idaho State Police are celebrating the arrest of a man driving a truck with more than 6,700 pounds of marijuana, which they say would make it the largest bust in history. There's only one small possible hiccup, though, in that the man arrested said that his truck was filled with industrial hemp. We just saw this same kind of story happen in Oklahoma earlier this month, where police thought they scored the biggest bust of their lives when they pulled over a truck that was likely hauling industrial hemp. Idaho does have a really strict law on hemp and marijuana, designating anything with more than 0.3% THC as the kind of marijuana that gets you in lots of trouble, so we'll have to see how this plays out. It's entirely possible that some kind of smart criminal decided to haul a bunch of adult-use cannabis under the guise of industrial hemp, but that doesn't look very likely. And that's the problem with having a patchwork of legality. When marijuana is legal everywhere, this kind of thing just won't happen. We end the day's top stories up in Canada, where Slang Worldwide, a company banked by industry giant Canopy Growth, debuted on the Canadian Securities Exchange with a ticker symbol of SLNG and a valuation around $645 million Canadian, or $480 million U.S., Slang is based in Toronto and owns a number of marijuana-related brands, including Colorado-based Open Vape. The company's two founders, Peter Miller and Billy Levy, sold their first marijuana company, Metrum Health, just two years ago to Canopy for $325 million U.S. Uh, Quick side note, if 
either of those guys listen to the show and need a chief podcasting officer for their next company, hit me up. You can read more numbers and details on this one over at MarketWatch. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz out in headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, Ease.com, California's top one-stop website for legal marijuana delivery, and now a national provider of hemp-based CBD products via their new platform over at EaseWellness.com. One of the really helpful parts of their new 2018 Ease Insights State of Cannabis report is the granular maps Ease published showing the order volume density in cities like Los Angeles and San Francisco. Ease's editorial team also broke out some of California's numbers along northern and southern lines, with one of the more interesting data points being the fact that CBD sales were much stronger in the northern part of the state, where they grew 89% last year over the southern part of the state where CBD sales grew at a slower rate of just 77%. CBD was also a big star of the year with the overall number of CBD consumers nearly doubling as more women and baby boomers in particular got into the market. If you do any kind of business in legal cannabis, then you need to click over to see Ease's new report. It's free, extremely well-written and designed, and has tons of useful things that will leave you a better and more informed marijuana entrepreneur. One last time, you just need to open up Ease.com, spelled E-A-Z-E, to find their 2018 Ease Insights report. Thanks to everyone at Ease.com and EaseWellness.com for supporting today's news. All right, time for the Blitz. Marijuana Business Daily has an insightful piece up looking at the year ahead for the Californian legal marijuana industry which is still settling into the permanent rules and regulations just released by state regulators. The state's adult use ballot measure, Proposition 64, went into effect last year, but legal operators have been bound by a set of temporary rules as the final regulations were figured out. Marijuana Business Daily's John Schroyer interviewed consultant Jackie McGowan, who predicted that 90% of all marijuana businesses currently up and running in California would not be in existence by the end of this year. Give this one a read. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at mjtodaydaily.com and on our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily. Leafly's Jay Lasseter nicely dives into New Jersey's cannabis legalization situation, where some good old-fashioned political rivalry is still gumming up the works in the state's transition to a more liberal and progressive marijuana policy. This story seems to pop up every few weeks now as it's kind of a big state and there's a lot of political will behind the effort to legalize adult use. But New Jersey is still New Jersey with its own particular political foibles and quirks. So we'll just need to keep watching. Denver, Colorado will see the opening of its second legal marijuana consumption business next month when the Vape and Play Lounge opens up. This storyline is a long-running one as the city voted via ballot measure back in 2016 to allow a pilot program where businesses can open up space for customers to consume marijuana. Denver has just one of those spaces open so far where sales of marijuana are not allowed, but vaping is. The soon-to-open Vape and Play Lounge will charge an admission fee that will let patrons hang out and consume their cannabis for a few hours. It's expected to open up on February 18th. Bloomberg is reporting that there is interest building in large U.S.-based investment funds for getting involved in Canadian cannabis companies ahead of being allowed to do the same in American markets. With the managing director of Cormac Securities, a Toronto-based brokerage, estimating that funds with more than $100 billion in assets under management were looking at the legal Canadian cannabis space. Click over for more numbers and names on this one. John Schroyer, Marijuana Business Daily, grabs a two for today with a second story on the headlines covering some possible finance problems for the California Growers Association, which saw the resignation of its executive director, Hezekiah Allen, last year. As John's piece has it, an audit of the association's funds after Allen's resignation revealed debts of more than $267,000, which is being attributed to the association led by Allen, spending money pledged from board members before actually seeing the money come in. This one has lots of detail and nuance, so make sure to give this one a read as well. 
Health Canada just released some valuable data for how its legal cannabis industry fared in December, the third calendar month in which the nation allowed for adult use sales. October 17th was the switchover for the end of cannabis prohibition in Canada, but even so, it's a valuable set of numbers to start tracking. Overall sales of marijuana in Canada, which were broken down by medical and adult use, We're up slightly in December over the previous month at just under 16,000 pounds of flour and 1,882 gallons of oil. And finally, for this snowy and blustery cold day, Leafly has a nice collection of photos and a good story from the first inaugural Bongspiel, a cannabis-friendly curling tournament recently held in Ontario that we've mentioned here on the show before. This one is fun and lighthearted, but I think it also speaks to the growing creep of cannabis normalization. For every cool and fun marijuana-related event that goes off without the world ending, we get that much closer to when the needless stigma around cannabis is gone. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you tomorrow morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily and visit our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, Ease, and to all of our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the lesser strengths of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Shay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in and starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.